One, check, two. Check, check, check. One, two. Are we live on Santa Cruz Waves yet, Neil? Yep. Is it official? Yes, we are. We're back. Welcome, everybody, to the Off Lip Radio Show. I'm going to say... 676. 676. We are... Um, deep. Deep. And, by the way, tonight, we've confirmed... We're gonna have an off the lip radio show to party. Mm-hmm. Oh, and we are we gonna are. we are gonna invite all of our past guests, and it's gonna be the best party ever. So if you've ever been a guest on this show, you get to come. You will be able to come to this party. It's except that one fantastic. chick. Fantastic. Didn't like her. Except yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> except for the one with the sea snake wetsuit. You're out. Um, but besides that, everybody's invited. It's gonna be a great show. But tonight, first off, thank you everybody on Santa Cruz Waves for tuning in. Uh, if you're on a podcast, driving down the road, keep two hands on the wheel, because tonight's going to be a special one. Joey Thomas is back. JT. Master surfboard shaper. You know, um, the soft-spoken legend of Santa Cruz. So, uh, if you're not familiar with Joey Thomas, we're going to clue you in. Joey, thanks for coming back. My pleasure. Thank you Yeah, and me. we're going to get that microphone right oh, up there. Yeah. It's Thank huge. Thank you very much um, for having me. Yeah. Um, go, TC, can we start off with the? Can we start off? Yeah. I show up tonight, and you go, who's the lady? Carol's the love, here. Is that, that Carol's here? The love of his life is what he said. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right? We gotta stop there. The love. You know what? And honestly, for a man to say, she's the love of my life. That's big. That is big. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, congrats. I mean it very much. Well, and... Um, Carol, you better come around, Carol, and give him a kiss because you want to see what you look like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, so Carol's <laughs> coming to everybody. That's JT's love He's of his life. Of my life. Yeah, <laughs> and that's important, right? You how, how much better is your life, knowing that uh, you have her? She's the one that makes, a good, uh, makes, me, makes me be able to make it. You know? Right. But I, you know, I've lost surfing. I lost being on the mat. But uh, she was giving me back the internal weight. Love it. I love that. Um, I know, Neil, this is a question you always ask, so I'm going to ask it. Who got Joey Thomas into surfing? Let's get let's start way back. Um, I was born in Kellogg, Idaho. I moved to uh, uh, L.A., 108th and Main and Figueroa. That's basically in Watts until kindergarten to fourth grade. Then fourth grade, we moved to the beach. I pedaled my bike down to the Coast Highway next to the International Airport, and that's the first time I saw people surfing. And I told my mom, I got to do that. And for her to let me do that was pretty darn good because I lost an older brother that drowned. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, so uh, that's how my surfing started. And, uh, and it, just, didn't, it just, didn't affect you? Him drowning did not affect you in any way from, from wanting to keep... T- to, to, to surf the waves? Um, Be in the ocean? You know, I never thought about it. Um, I, I just uh, had the desire to be in the water that uh, I, I didn't have him too much in the back of my mind. Okay. Hmm. What kept you surfing? Because as we know, surfing's not easy when you're like, I'm the star. Well, when you have brothers and sisters like a lot of you, I didn't. I was an only child. And when I found surfing and when my mother bought, bought me my first surfboard. Which was her, what? What kind of board was it? Uh, Dewey Weber surfboard. Wow. Yeah. Bet you wish you had that, huh? I was what? You bet you wish you still had that board? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> it was a glued panel rail with an eight inch stringer and a sunrise fan. And yeah, no, it was quite good. Hmm. And uh, um, that's how I got started. Okay, so first off, anybody who knows JT knows that you, your surfing ability was fantastic. I'll, I'll, I'll give that to you right now. Uh, did it come easy for you, learning how to surf? You know, I think so. I mean, for the love of it and being in the water and the, the sensation of, of riding a surfboard, it's, it's quite incredible. Uh, yeah. It, it did because it's a love and desire and the passion. Of, and back then it was walking in the nose, hanging five, hanging ten, drop knee cut backs, and, and, and then converting to a short board when I came up here. Um, yeah, no, but the whole, the whole range of surfing on a surfboard is, is uh, I, I've been very insanely blessed mm, to, uh, right. to have that journey and that uh, ride. And how did you end up coming up here from L.A.? Pardon me? How, how did you end up coming up here? Um, Jim and Tom Overland came up here from the Overland shop. 
Mm. And uh, I was just in Hawaii for a year, and then I worked with them back in the Weber shop as a cleanup boy. And then I found out that they moved up here, and then Tom uh, taught me how to shape, and that, that's how it all started. You know, it amazes me how many of the best shapers on this planet started as a cleanup boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, no, it's I'm, insane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you were one, right? Yeah, no, I was yeah. never a shaper, but I, yeah. I dreamed of sitting on a barrel and sweeping foam dust and I and I did. Yeah. But it's you know that but you were that human. Yeah, I cleaned Harold Iggy's shaping room. I'll wow. never forget I was playing with a shaper I mean a planer at Skilled One Hundred one time and Dewey and Iggy were in the next stall over and I got my shirt caught in the planer. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and and Iggy and Dewey came over going, you're lucky he didn't suck you into the planer. And he's right, you know what I mean? So I, yeah. got, I got one on my leg later in life. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. The hazards of shaping? Yeah. So yeah. You, you were sweeping and cleaning up. Yeah. And uh, when did you decide that shaping was going to be a part of your life? Kind of didn't take off on it then, but uh, um, I was just so in awe of Harold Iggy and a guy named Tack uh, with their, their shaping ability. And then after Hawaii, and, and Jim offered me, to, and Tom offered me uh, a, a chance to learn how to shape. That, and that was at the house building at the other end. Mm. And then uh, making five, three twin tens and going to Anya Nuevo and uh, or off the coast. We rode really small boards back then. Tiny, mm -hmm. really tiny. Well, I mean, with a, a five eight was kind of like a gun when I was a kid. You know, yeah. like it was yeah. weird. Yeah. So five, five three was was the smallest. Five three, yeah. yeah. Five two, yeah, yeah. But luckily, so, they were like three and a half inches thick or something too, right? No, they weren't. They're were two and three quarters. At one time, until Croteau came in with a new with a Dick Brewer foil, mm -hmm. and that changed a lot of things for a lot of us because I, I love Croteau so much that I go, oh, this must be better. And so I did change that uh, board that Tom Overland had me designing. I have a photo of me in the shaping room shaping the boards that I thought. Uh, worked best for me at that time period. Were the Overlands, now earlier we saw we have a couple of yeah. you know, Overlands up here on the roof in the store. You know, they don't come up a lot on the radar. Secretly mm -hmm. I feel like they made a giant change in surfboard design in our community. Yes. Um, and it was a lot of it was going smaller, huh? Was that the sort of their oh, idea? Yeah, yeah. Well, with us, we were, you know, getting off the, the longboard and coming up here and uh, I've got the templates in my shaping room. You know, it says 5'3", you know, 1971 on it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, Tom was pretty amazing. I feel like that's punk rock in 1970, well, in it, a way. You know, was like it a, wild, was, yeah. it, was it the Wild West back then, a little bit? Yeah, <clears throat> I, I would think so. Um, it was p pretty wide open as far as design goes and who can ride the smallest surfboard, you know. That happened. Yeah. Who, wrote, who, did, who, did, who in fact did ride the smallest surfboard? I think the Oberlin and us, we did at yeah. first, yes. That's amazing. Yeah. And so let's jump back to Cruteau. Yeah. Because we, obviously, you know, rest in peace Mike Cruteau, we, we did not have a chance to get him on the show. Uh, but uh, I think looking back, and you can maybe uh, fill us in on this, he was a little ahead of his time. He was. He was like I said. He changed uh, everyone's design and rails and stuff more to a Dick Brewer type sh uh, shape. No, I, I, I just I found the guy so fascinating and fun to be around. Uh, he could shape five boards in an hour. <laughs> it seemed like you know. Oh, he was the animal. No, yeah. he was. He would be <laughs> foam would be flying everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed his company. Did you ever see him fight? Uh, he was too big to, he was too scary to fight, I think, you know what I mean? He, he was just a giant human being. For sure. And like a cat, like nine lives too. Yeah. Because you know, we know he like, uh, the time he hit the chain on the dirt bike, he had like all kinds yeah. of crazy yeah, stuff yeah, that he, happened he, to him. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you miss, do you miss like those guys, the Crutos? Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, Mike, Mike was the leading character of all of them, you know, yeah, hands down. Now... 
You held it down at Steamer Lane. Let's just, I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah. I don't, I, I <laughs> fear for anybody no who dropped in on you. Yep. Um, there was a time period I was okay. Yeah, like you held it down. I mean, I, 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 I'm just going to let the viewers know. If you dropped in on JT in the 80s, I mean, God bless your soul. <laughs> no you survived. Um, no leash? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but yeah. the leashes were around. I mean, I know. No, there was no leashes. No. But when I had my best time period, there was, you know, the two pictures I have, the bottom turn with the twin, twin chin. Yeah, I got that picture. Okay, yeah. that's no leash. Mm. And then the roundhouse cutback, the past vertical one, um, that was no leash. And while we have the leash subject, and uh, we can talk about Chuck Stralick, yeah. because, uh, you know, he recently passed away. And for those who know Chuck Stralick and West Coast Surfboards, was a big part of the history of Santa Cruz surfing. Yeah. But he was doing research on the surf leash. Yeah. In your rem in your mind, who was the person? Mike Shreds. He's the one who invented yeah. the leash. Yeah. And you know what? The most funnest guy to ever surf with in this town was Pat O'Neill. Right. He was so fun and so good. But, uh, and he got the picture of the leash, yeah. right? I, I, I got to live with him for a, a couple of months over here at Jack's house. And uh, he was the most funnest guy on the planet. He'd drive around in his Mercedes with his feet, you know, <laughs> and, and drive up uh, autos, you know, where autos Oh, of course, yeah. He'd drive up in that corner and uh, all by feet, you know. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, no, he was quite And so Mike, was, was Mike Shriver? Was Mike Shrive. Yeah, yeah, Shrive. Yeah. And he was and he had a suction cup, and he kind of steered the board and had it attached on his to wrist. his wrist. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. That was yeah. the first surf leash. Were you big on it, or were you a holdout on the leash? I was a holdout. Uh, yeah, I was a holdout. I'd rather have it kind of, you know, put it on my leg instead of, uh, you know, coming yeah. with that. You know, but I, I think I tried it for a little while. You know, I, I'd like not swimming. You know? Well, for sure. Good swimmer? Were you, or you held yeah. on your board? Oh, yeah, I was a good swimmer. I could turtle or I could duck dive, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, getting back to surfboard shaping. Uh, yeah. How many surfboards have you shaped? Do you know? I have no idea. No idea? <laughs> no. I mean, it's got to be thousands. I know it's thousands. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, and do you still enjoy it as much as you did back way back when? you still enjoy it today? You love it? Uh, you know, I, I do because uh, I, I can't surf. So it's the only enjoyment that I can get out of surfing. Just to bake uh, them. Because I'm not surfing. And when I see someone who really enjoys a board and going, Hey, man, this thing works really good. That's me going back in the water that I get that I can't get by not being in the water, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. No, you've, you've never left it. It's, it. The ability may not be there, but yeah. the brain, you 100%, you love it as much as anything. Yeah, but you know, if I see a wave in a carpet, it's I, I'm I'm riding it. You know, <laughs> I, see, you know, I love it. You know, and we leave the house, and then the first thing I do, I look over to my right shoulder and see how the swell is. You know, so. Well, I think it, that's it's, a. It's uh, it's not easy. It's not easy not being able to surf or being a senior citizen and and get in the fourth quarter and you can't play anymore. Yeah. You know? well, yeah. And let's, let's, I mean, I know we've had issues, uh, you've, you've had issues yeah. health-wise. Yeah. Um, but besides surfing, you're, you're a black belt, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. You have a black belt or have I, a black belt. Have Once a, you have one, you have you're a black belt. One. You're always a black belt. I don't care if I you... have a fourth degree black belt you're in a, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and a black belt in Japanese Okinawa and a brown belt in Korean. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And I know that you were a huge influence in some of the most successful... Uh, MMA, uh, Jiu Jitsu, anybody that's involved in martial arts in this town. I feel like you were the forefront of that. You shared your love of it. Well, I, I, I don't think I was the forefront of it. I was lucky to have really good uh, friends that uh, Claudio Franca and Garth Taylor and uh, some really good athletes and uh, yeah. good people. Garth, a world champion. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. You a badass. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he was beating up people when he was in high school, you know. <laughs> uh, and I feel like uh, with you and your between your surfing and your martial arts, you had this uh, aura that just you 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 got respect for your aura, whereas you didn't demand it or Sometimes. tell people. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, and well, and let's let's talk about that. Yeah, uh, looking back on your life in surfing. Here in Santa Cruz, 
Did you have to demand respect or did you get respect? Well, like looking back. Uh, you know, you, you can't take it for granted. Sometimes you get it and sometimes you won't. It's, it's, it's how you evaluate it, you know what I mean? You, uh, you can't expect uh, to get respect every single time. Cause that's My friend, our, our, our mutual friend Mark, you know the dentist, Mark? Uh -huh. yeah, he, he said there's no one stronger it was in jiu-jitsu. No one stronger than, than what he was. Was there ever a time where you backed down? Uh, I'm sure I, I, I did, but I'm can you remember? You, was there uh, anything I in particular? I'm going to tell you about it. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, well, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I can't think of it at the moment. Me and Nacho Lopez, we got jumped uh, a couple times and uh, or once good time, and we came out okay. But uh, yeah, um, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> maybe nobody took you down. Well, no. Well. No, I'm, I'm, I get beat at, oh, in my last part of my jiu-jitsu, I had this uh, blue belt guy just smash the hell out of me and told me every time he sees me, he's going to smash me, you know, and that's the first time I actually got scared. Well, there we have it. That's yeah, all, that's, that's the answer I'm looking for. And this guy had hands like a mongoloid, you know, I mean, like <laughs> giant, and he looked at me and I was going... I'm not supposed to say that to a black belt. You know? <laughs> no. It's just a blue belt, but yeah, it's. Uh, so you got scared on the mat. I did. Let's, let's take it back to the slot. Was there ever a time you were scared after you know holding down the turf no, at the wing? So. Uh, not in my my prime at the lane. I think you know, especially that one photograph of the bottom turn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the indicator roundhouse. Uh, at middle peak, you know. The lane has such incredible waves. I mean, you can ride a wave from the peak to the dream end, you mm -hmm. know, on a good day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I, I got scared out there a few times. Have you gotten one of those? The middle of the peak, the dream end wave? Some way. Have you gotten one of those all the way oh, through? Oh, I've gotten a few of those, yes. I know Jay Collins got one. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah a few times in, since 71. Amazing. Uh, you first met VC when? Uh, Richie and Vince probably when they were in junior high school and they started showing up at the avenue and then Vince, uh, I, first time I saw Vince, uh, I seen this little toe head screaming and jumped off the point at Stockton Avenue. I go, who is this crazy kid that just jumped <laughs> off the point just about 30 feet, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, those two are, they're Quite incredible. But they were all, but, but, but Vince and Richie, they were all on water. They were so different. They were, they were, yeah. Vince was a little flamboyant and uh, uh, Richie was more uh, uh, calm and collective and uh, his dad was a preacher and, you know, his whole family had come in. How many brothers they got? Four? Four, I think. Four or five. Uh, Raymond and Conrad and Dave. Four, I think. Can you? Well, we had Richie on the show, and he loved that about BC because yeah. while BC was having his emotional moments, <laughs> Richie was catching all the waves. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Yeah, and so he, he loved he, it. He loved it. Go ahead, <laughs> get the attention. Yeah, I, I don't need that. I give you a wave. <laughs> can you yeah. give us a moment? Can you give us a moment that you remember uh, most uh, close to your heart about BC? Um. Apart from being on the show, on radio show with us, in my heart, yeah, don't make me cry. That's okay. Um, we, we can all cry. It's, yeah. it's good to cry. No, um, no, he, he was uh, he was he was a little on the crazy side. He had a huge heart. He'd do anything for you, and uh, I, I loved his family. Bill, his dad was, uh, you know, all of them were cool. The reader was cool. Rita, yeah, yeah. rest yeah. in peace, and, amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, it, it's the whole, oh, I'd, I'd adopt him if I was old enough and he was my son, yeah. Hmm. Did you, did you let him be who he was or did you try and, like, oh, you, did you try? No, no he, he was going to be, he, he <laughs> was, no matter what. No stopping him, right? No, uh, <laughs> uh, no. You just can't get in front of the runaway no. train, right? Yeah, no, exactly. Right. You know, I don't think he meant to be that mean, but, uh, or Henry. But well, it's funny. Tonight earlier I was telling a story. My friend Bobby Brown, who's uh, no longer with us, but 
one day we drove over the lane. You know, we're East Siders, mm-hmm. right? So we're like, let's go over the lane. And he dropped in on Vince. And, uh, <laughs> and Bobby was a karate guy. He had a, he had a black belt. That didn't help him with Vince at all. Because Vince <laughs> grabbed him by the ears and rubbed his face up and down the fence. And that's yeah. the old fence. No, it's... Uh... And uh, we drove home and I looked at him and I'm like, it looks like you got attacked by a tiger tonight. <laughs> you know, that's... <laughs> And you, so, you can always well, wear that belt, for, you know. Yeah. For the, you know, there's always going to be someone just a little bit meaner. Vince, I would say, had ever, if you were in his good side, he had your back. Yeah. You know? He did. Yeah, and I figured that was one. His I was going to wear his T-shirt tonight too. Damn it, I have a T-shirt of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, and do you remember the last time you saw BC? Uh, well, with the epilepsy, a lot of your your memory gets uh, washed away. Um, I no, I don't. Yeah, cause we uh, we you know we have great video of you and VC and, yeah. and photos that we we I still have and mm-hmm. we'll, yeah. we'll get to you. You know, like oh that'd be great because he came on the show and just was like so much fun and he loved you. Yeah, no, he, he had that bell, he had that bellowing, he had that way, bellowing yeah. laugh, like he had that bellowing laugh, like he just wouldn't stop laughing. He made me do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we had a Point Break Live on the show, and and uh, and Vince came on, and he played Gary Busey, and he did such an amazing job. He was better than Gary Busey in Point Break. That's right. But I, I will say this about Vince, you know, and he got into fishing, as you know. Yeah. And uh, I was really into fishing. He lived in Capitola. And uh, he would literally every day after fishing drive by with his boat and we would talk about fishing and stuff. And that was, his passion never waned in his entire life, you know. And I always, to me, you two, in my opinion, humble, very humble opinion, I always think of like, who were the sheriffs? It's you and Vince. <laughs> I'm just going to say, yeah. if, if I could put a, two badges on two humans, I would say that you and BC... Have the badges. Yeah. Did you? Know. If you saw them in the water, TC, would you get in the water? Would you? Would you get well, in? I had a really good way of not looking at Joey. <laughs> 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 and so, like, if well, you know, um, again, it was a different time. It wasn't like you had a lawyer in your back pocket, and if you got socked, you were gonna like press charges. Back then, you, know, you just uh, tiptoed around the boys. And, um, and so I, if you paddled for a wave, Joey, it was your wave, you know, like if you took one paddle, I was like, later, I'm going to paddle that way. And that's just how life was. And it's different these days. But, um, it was also really fun to watch you guys rip, you know, mm-hmm. your, the surfing ability of the guys that were there every day was entertaining. And, um, sometimes I would just sit on a shoulder and watch as a fan. You know, that we, was how it was. Well, you and Vince, were, were your father f- figure to some of the younger generation coming up, like uh, like uh, Barney or Rat Boy? Well, Flea, Vince was first, the, but they all surfed really good right after him. But Vin, Vince would carve some lines that, that to this day you'd go, look at the track that he just laid. And uh, uh, Barney and the rest of those guys came right behind him and did just as well. I felt like he was the guy that was like pounding on doors at 6 a.m. Like we're going right now. Yeah. You know, like that was. I feel like that's kind of Vince's thing is. Yeah. Uh, he he was a, such a motivator, but also a coach, and also a uh, control of not letting people ah, get. I always you know. Hear voice, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's cool. How about uh, how about some other guys? Let's talk about like a uh, about Wally. You know, like. Oh, that's another hard one. That's yeah. A real, another really tough one. Yeah. I mean, no. I know he was you. Worked in the same shop. Yeah. You know, you guys no, surfed every day a, together. No, I could cry you in a minute over. You know? No, we don't want you to cry. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> uh, no, Wally's another one that uh, was super, super close to me. Um, and his grandma used to live at the end of the ball on top of the hill. I tell her that all the time. And uh, just as his uh, the love of surfing and the love of the lane, uh, yeah, Wally was uh, really cool. Is he the only one who had a parking spot? He probably did. Yeah. I mean, because I don't really know of anyone else who had a spot. Like, I remember one time I pulled up for a surf check. <laughs> I literally was like, hey, dude, you're moving right now. Because <laughs> Wally was behind me. And he wasn't, he was, no, he I was, I was like pulling up, but I was in Wally's spot. Right. You know, like, Wally had a spot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's third generation of Santa Cruzian. Earned know? a spot. Yeah, he earned a spot. And also built surfboards. 
Uh -huh. Polished a bunch of your boards, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And you guys had a good time building boards together? Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was a really good polisher. You know, that's not easy to polish surfboard. I'm sorry. Well, when he went to Hawaii, I was his stunt polisher. Yeah. Well, I so, so Susie Howe would keep him on the payroll because, you know, as we know, Wally went to Hawaii every year. He was like, he was one of the originals. Opened the door for a lot of our yeah. North Shore followers pass behind him. You hear about it from the younger guys now that Wally was the one that got Michael Ho and all these guys to, you know, take roof under their wing. Yeah. Oh, sure. Talk about Ovo? Oh, yeah, and Ovo, too. Yeah. No. He's really good. Really good surfer. Even to this day, good jiu-jitsu guy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he does drywall work, which Mike Witt taught us both how to do. You mm -hmm. know, what a cool trade that was, too. Oh, and probably one of the best laminators ever. Oh, yeah. No, really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. No, super good. You, in today's world, surfing has changed since it seems like the last couple of years. It's still, uh, shapers are still uh, sought after, do you think? But now, every time you see someone riding down the street, it's a, it's a board that was from Costco. I mean, is, well, there's we, a lot of sponges, but also the machine. I, I feel like uh, that board right there, yeah. to be honest with you, that's a lot. Sounds weird, but it's all my numbers and specs, and my file and stuff. But the machine building my surfboard, right? And it's, uh, you know, I feel like to a part of, am I really doing this? Is this really me or well, the but machine? But this machine's given you another twenty years, like it does, like it has for Doug, and yeah, right. It's giving yeah. you, it's giving you. But I'm, I'm amazed, uh, you know, how it, uh, you know, it's taken all of the hard work out, and uh, like I say. I, I come down on um, drive by for a while and I see all these boards that are with no logos on them, but I know somebody shaped them. But you can still have a diamond. If you have a diamond, you still have to polish it. Mm -hmm. Do you have to? Because before it goes on her finger, right? Is there one on her finger yet? Not yet. We're working on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Throwing them under the bus. <laughs> right. Come on. You want to wait till the last. <laughs> Minute of the Sorry. show before you do that. <laughs> but you got to polish the diamond. You got to. I mean, yes, you have a machine, but yes, you have to polish the diamond. Yes, you do, but it's this. Uh, yeah, I just find it a, a bit. Uh, am I cheating? <laughs> Can we talk about this board a little bit? Yes, I'm I would love to pull this down. Yeah. Because um, I honestly, I, I, I there's something that I just wanted to say about this. Um, is this a custom board for a customer? No, that's just a stock, stock board. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that growing up in Santa Cruz, uh, if you wanted to be a temp to like be a local, your surfboard would have this logo on it. <laughs> you know, that, honestly, because oh, thank you. today in today's world, that pride's not there like we used to have. You um, know, yeah. it was different. You were judged if you lived in this town, you rode a shaper from this town. Correct. That's how it was. Yeah. I was in the water the other day, and this girl was riding a JT board. I was paddled next to her. I go, do you know the history of that board? Do you know that? Do you know who that is? She goes, no, I bought it online or whatever. I go, don't ever, ever get rid of that board. Yeah. And I said, she didn't come tonight, but I said, you know what? If you want to have that board signed, which you should do, mm -hmm. you get your ass down here at 7 o'clock tonight, but she didn't come. But, you know. This That's is, really kind of you. Well, it's true. <laughs> It is true. I had some, you know, Joe, you're super I had, humble. I had that happened before, years ago, with Johnny Rice. Johnny Rice was sat out there in indicators, yeah. not catching a thing, just sitting on this board in the water. And this gal was paddling with her father, and she was on a Johnny Rice board. And I, walk, I go, hey, do you know who that is? Do you, do you know who that, that logo is? And Johnny was over there. I go, he's the, main, the guy who made the board is sitting over there 50 yards away. Go talk to him, mm -hmm. and you're going to find out about that board. And an hour later, they were still talking to one another. We shaped together in Florida for Dick Catrice, you and Johnny? Johnny Rice. Yeah. And I. yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, let's talk about this board. Tell, yeah. me, tell me about it. Uh, that's what Richie Jr. is, uh, 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 t you know, tearing the lips off and throwing huge buckets of water. And uh, it, his dad is actually riding one, too. I told him, you can't ride one Rich Sr. because uh, that's out of your league. He made me a liar. Let's get that. He, yeah. he made me a liar. Uh, he's out there ripping really well on it, and uh, I, I got uh, 
the O'Neill kids on it too. Mm. So I, I got you know three or four really good young kids stuff. Who 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 came up with the logo? The design of the yeah. logo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did. Yeah. You, you drew, remember? You drew that yourself? I I think I drew that for me. Uh, oh, I don't know, but he took two years of um, art. Yeah, I went to California. It's, 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 it's an awesome logo. It's timeless. I mean, it yeah. really is. I, it's just, it's uh, this is an EPS. Yes. EPS. Uh, it's a a, a, a Twinser with the, the small front fins. Yes. And uh, it's got a lot of hip to it. It's got, it's got some shape, right? It's, this is a yeah. That would uh, be the board if I died see, tomorrow. See, see. That would I don't be the, I, I don't do around, leaders, turn, but turn it's, 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 it's I, thank you. I yeah. don't either. I no. don't know metrics either. Thank you. I, no, <laughs> I, don't, I think I think leaders are terrible for surfboards. Yeah. But uh, it, it this feels like it would float somebody up towards like 190, 200 pounds maybe, right? Uh, 170, 175. Okay, okay. Let's put you out of the equation, DC. Well, no, I'm close. <laughs> I'm close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On a good day. <laughs> but, um, you know, I just... Yeah, that's three inches thick. Yeah, it does yeah, have some thickness. It's there. substantial. But we came down a little bit to, to his, his, his board. We're down to two and three quarters, 19 and a quarter, instead right. of 20 and a quarter, uh, 13 three quarters nose, and 15 and a half inch tail. Um, we were talking about Richie Schmidt Jr. Mm -hmm. um, about how his surfing is uh, reminds me of like a Wayne Lynch of surfing. You know, he's he's yeah. doing it on his so ability. Sit down again, but... He's not doing it on his. Uh, I get that. Yeah, he's not doing it on his um, contest finishes. He's doing it on his ability to ride a surfboard in any conditions. Yeah, it reminds me of his father, by the way. Even though we have Sunset and yeah. some Waimea finishes yeah. for Richie, but. It's fun to see that now, here we are a generation later, you're still doing the same thing, right? Yes, yeah. Well, Richard was, was on, uh, Senior was on ABC Wild World Sports. Yes, I don't yes. Remember so, that. Yeah. How long ago was that? that like the 78 or something? Yeah, I don't know, so yeah. How cool was that? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't beat that. Uh, ABC Wild, Wild World of Sports. But, uh, yeah, little Richie's, uh, then uh, uh, Makai is... Uh, Doing their own thing and doing pretty darn good. I love that. Yeah. Uh, do you ever lay in bed at night and think about surfboard design? Nobody's got to tell him. Oh, hang on a minute, TC. Oh, he's got Carol in bed? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> if Carol's on vacation and a girl's, girl's trip, do you lay in bed and think about surfboard design? Is that still like a passion of yours? No, well, anything that represents a wave in my mind and sight, I'm riding it. You know, so yeah. I'm just, um, you know. Whatever it takes for me to visually, mentally surf, I'll take a chance and I'll ride it. Love it. How did you use jujitsu with surfing? How, how did you combine the two? Uh, just the flexibility. Okay. Yeah, I mean confidence, you know. You're not trained to be a bully. You're, you're trained to seek perfection of character. Mm. A better person. And flexibility prevents injury and all the other things associated yeah. with it, you yeah. know. And so it yeah. keeps you in the water longer, you know. It's... Yeah, plan. it's like all these uh, all these older guys, these senior guys, are you know are, uh, are really taking it. It's like I said, I didn't come down with epilepsy. Everything was fine until '65, and then I came down with epilepsy, and that changed me for the last seven years. Mm, yeah. But until then, all the way up to '65, I was going, bring it. Right. You know. Um, you're a pretzel maker. You like to uh, tie guys up in <laughs> knots. Yeah. Um, did anyone tie you up in a knot? Oh, plenty of times. Yeah. It's like I told you about <laughs> Garth. The uh, you know, unfortunately, I, I, I didn't get to have that happen. But uh, uh, I, I got we got to train in this place, and I have the most respect for Garth Taylor. Um, yeah, no, I was hiding from him when he was a junior in high school. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's amazing, really. Yeah. He, 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 he's, Quite a character. So you, so it's, it's so nice. It's refreshing to hear because you know it's a. Uh, if you look, if you talk to a lot of people in Santa Cruz surfing history, I mean, you had a, um, you had a reputation, and you, I, I feel like you, uh, you earned it, and you earned the respect, and people in the lineup um, tiptoed a bit around you, BC, some of the other guys, while Richie was catching every wave. <laughs> um, but it's, it's interesting <laughs> to hear you say. That you had to, you tiptoed around somebody, Garth Taylor. 
Uh, Clark Taylor, when I first came to town, there was a ton of guys. Uh, there was like uh, Bill uh, Kilfoyle. I don't know if you, you guys remember him. Kilfoyle, Ron and Dick Lindsay. Um, I played golf with Ron Lindsay most days uh -huh. on uh, yeah. many, many, um, uh, my, my golf game. We have a uh -huh. group of guys, and Ron, uh, Ron Decade Lindsay. Yes. Was his name? Yes, and. Uh, uh, was it? You mentioned. Do you have a brother? Did you mention a brother? You had? Ron and Dick Lindsay. Ron and Dick Lindsay. Yeah. Yes. And if I remember right, and then uh, Bobby Henderson. I mean, there's a, so many people. Um, Tom Ralston. Mm. You know, there was such a group of uh, of guys that you had to break in to before coming here. It was the old west, right? Yeah. No, it yeah. was. Yeah. yeah. And they weren't the nicest guys that time. Mm. You know, so. It's yeah. nice to hear that, you know, because I guess every generation has their predecessors, you know, who yeah. you had to like befriend or earn the respect of to get your spot, right? Yeah. And so it's nice to know, like, I was like that generation behind you that was terrified of you, you know, and it's like there's always that like generation, yeah, you know? Order, right? yeah, yeah, there's yeah. like it happens over and over again. So it's it's interesting to hear, like, you know, you had that same situation with. The previous generation. Yeah, yeah. I you, wish I could remember all the names because there were some good characters <laughs> on the West Side. I'll tell you. Okay. You missed the. Do you miss the River Mouth? You surfed there a lot, obviously. I did. Yeah, I I, I did miss that. Uh huh. And the harbor a little bit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I I still like the name. I'm sorry. We're gonna ask him the question. Our, our, our season question. But we're gonna double barrel it with the with the decade and the day. Okay. So we're gonna. You can do so, the first. We'll do the first part. I'll do the first part because okay. we ask. All of our uh, Se seasoned yeah. guests. And we used to ask them the next question, but I'm going to ask you this question. Is there one day of surfing that you remember like yesterday? Probably those two shots, the bottom turn and the roundhouse cutback, because I used to do a roundhouse cutback and go past vertical and, and put my feet above my head off the rebound off the whitewater. Hmm. And to me, that uh, was uh, I still haven't seen anybody do it yet. And, Not that and, I'm bragging. Yeah, yeah, no, you gotta brag. Were those shots yeah. the same day? Uh, I would like to think so, but I'm well, not quite sure. <laughs> so are we gonna say that that was the day? Like, yeah, because those are obviously it, some, yeah. some pretty vivid memories you have. Well, there was also there was a beaver tail wetsuit, mm. and then I had uh, tape to hold my uh, wetsuit from rolling up. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you can see the tape where I had it on. Oh really? Yeah. So those uh, beaver uh, tails. And you, yeah. And your favorite, your favorite decade was? That uh, seventies. Seventies. Uh, seventies, sixties too. You know the sixties. Uh, learning, uh, uh, being on the Weber team, and uh, I went to high school uh, El, El Segundo. I graduated in '67. So yeah, and just learning how to surf. You know. Uh, you were so stoked then, right? I mean, oh, going like, to the beach, and I, I never had a wetsuit for five years. You know, I just I would there was, used to be a, a big pit fire pit that they have uh, make a big fire. He up here? No, down yeah. there. Down there. Uh, I do have a few bad karma things coming up because when the lifeguard used to go for a, a, to save somebody or to help somebody a rescue. I would take his lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I, I, I apologize. Truth be told. I have some gnarly karma coming from this. But, uh, you, well, you he didn't get struck back and he'd be looking for his lunch. lunch. <laughs> 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 I've been at the beach all day, you know? Oh, man. Uh, no. That's where it all started, not right? Post, not post Dylan about that, but uh, oh, that's my a gosh. real JT stand up for you, though. Yeah. Uh, so, Joey, let's just talk about something ahead. Uh, you're obviously still making surfboards. Correct. Most people here in town know how to get in touch with you, but if somebody doesn't, uh, is there a phone number? Is there a, do you have a website, a social media, some way that someone can get in touch with you? I think the website is down. But it's yeah. not we're yeah. operating right we have, now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So nobody's doing anything with it. Yeah. So Just his phone number. Okay, so it, is that something you want to give out on the air right now? Sure. Yeah? yeah. Go ahead and, uh, folks, listen. 831? 831 600 600 7438 7438 You want a JT board? Come on back. And the phone number is 831 700 7438 If there was one person, I, I know there's a lot. Yeah. If there's one person that we could say, 
you could go in the back room and have an hour talk with right now that's not here today, who would it be? Vince. It would be Vince? Vince? Yeah. Yeah. Vince and Richard probably, you know. I have some, you know, I have some great photos of you and Vince, and I'm sure you have plenty, but yeah, from when you came to the radio station. I, I actually, we don't, we have, don't have a lot of photos. Uh, I got, I got yeah. plenty of them. I get, I'll make sure you get. Make I sure got you a have really them. good one of him on a T-shirt that I was meaning to bring, but mm -hmm. I missed it. I just love how, um, you know, you two had this vibe, you know, and uh, vibes are priceless. You know, you can't make a vibe or buy a vibe. But you two, and I think anybody watching, anybody with history in Santa Cruz would know that uh, if you wanted to go to the lane and catch waves, you almost had to, like, punch the JT and VC time card, you know, <laughs> to, get, to get it done. And I don't know if you see it that way, but as a kid, I see it that way. You know, it's... <laughs> And there was a few others. Don't get me wrong. There was a, a there was a, a pack of guys, but you you earned it. And uh, well, and thank you very and, much. Yeah, and uh, that's 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 what I think Neil and I love about this show is that we're trying to um, you know share that with the world. And you, I wish I wish that people who drive who buy these Costco boards and come here surfing, which is so surfing exploded. I, just, I, I hope that some of these, some of these guys, women, me, men or women, go back and check the history of the sport. Yeah, I, because wonder, it has I a rich wonder if, if, if that's going to happen, if, or, or is it because of the sponge that's taken out? You know, I, it's funny, because Jerry Lopez has his name on the boards, right? Yes. And I, I've, yeah. I've started doing this. To, you ask everybody, huh? I ask, do you know who that is? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. You know? No. I don't know. No, no, no. I don't know. Well, Next question. That, that, to me, that's what broke the the, the bloodline for surfing industry and and uh, well, let me ask you this. let me let me ask you let's say he got, let's say he got I'm I'm picking a number a million dollars yeah for having his name on those boards and he was you know obviously the you know a, a pipeline master would you do something like that was that something you do for would you well, give would I, you I heard he said he was sorry to a lot of his friends but if someone gave me a million bucks I. I you know, I don't. I don't know. Right. It's a tough one. Man. It's a tough question, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you, you see that uh, if you can buy a board for a hundred bucks and it's basically going to get you into wave and, and get you to the beach, yeah, and you don't give a shit, yeah. you know, then right. that's fine. Yeah. Unless you're going to get into it a little bit more. Does it affect you in any way, or is you still? Well, it doesn't me because I'm not in the water. <laughs> right. Right. No kidding. Yeah. I mean, it's becoming. And boards are expensive. It, yeah, it, it's hard. Well, actually, you know what? I, I don't think they are expensive. I mean, how much is this board? How much is this board right here? Eight twenty. Eight twenty. See, to me, don't to me, mm -hmm. I probably to TC. I think they're cheap. I think they're a work of art, and I think they should be eighteen twenty. Yeah, I do too. I but you know, and I think I do. I I spoke to many shapers. I mean, we all love I'm Bob and I'm, God I'm, knows I'm, Doug Howe. I know all of I'm, us. Bob too. I'm lucky to make a hundred dollars. Right on a shape and color. My friend, know? my friend had a ship board shaped by Doug Hout for, for her. For her, she said she'd never even ridden it, like, and she was shocked that the thing was, you know, nine hundred and eight seventy-five bucks. Yeah, it's it wasn't nineteen hundred and seventy-five bucks because that's yeah, what they're, this board's eight hundred bucks. What, how much is this board? Eight twenty. Eight twenty. Absolutely. Be no, no, no. It right. should be eighteen twenty. Well, it, it, okay. Let's just look back. In nineteen eighty-five, surfboards were four hundred dollars. And three fifty if they were clear. Cars were like three thousand dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Cars today are forty thousand dollars. More than that. And surfboards have not gone up at the same. But it's hard projection. to charge your really good friend, you know, nine hundred or fifteen hundred dollars a board. You know what I mean? But I, I, but I, I can't but do Joe, that. I think if they're if they are a really good friend, they should yeah. treat you right. They yeah. should treat you for the work that you've done. Well, I had a few, few friends that will stiff you. <laughs> ah, oh, those they're watching. I won't tell you. <laughs> they, know, they know. They'll know if they're listening. They, they know who you are. Mm. You know who you are. Out there. <laughs> I have a good friend who always says, "If you want to get rid of friends, loan them money." Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, because then they're not friends anymore. So yeah. you know, it's you yeah. better not be listening, my friend. Yeah. Uh, um, are, are you afraid the boards wouldn't sell for eight? Let's say this boards eight. Let's say this boards eighteen hundred bucks. Are you? Would you be afraid like it's not? Oh no, no, no it's not, not going to sell. 
Uh, I just feel that it's too much money. You know, I just feel after all the years that I've put in the surfboards, I would love to get $1,800 a board. I'd only have to make three boards a month. Or if that, but... I don't know, uh, just, it sounds like something you might give it a, tr give it a whirl, I think, you know? Yeah. He should, he should go up. Right? Yeah. Because be you're, mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not making a, you know, you're not making Fords, you're making Rolls Royces, for crying out no, loud. I'm barely making wages. You, right? Yeah. But you, you know, should, you know... the cost of a board costs you three fifty to glass it. Right. It costs you $200 for the glass and 55 for the fin. Yeah. And, and add that. Yeah. And then take that from what you yeah. your profit. And, and take, what do you have, like 50 years of experience building yeah. these things? Yeah. You know? Like, it, that's, to me, that's priceless. Yeah. You know, and it's, you it's can, not the center. Yeah. And if you're riding one, you can be proud of what you're riding. You're going to be proud. You're not going to be proud riding a freaking, freaking Costco board. You're going to be proud of what you're riding. Yeah. You, you have 55 years of history yeah. riding underneath you. I, tonight I was so glad to hear this. I want to brag about you, Joey. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Seriously. I am such a fan of JT. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I really am. I don't and know I, why, and, and if, you're, you. if you're not familiar, just call 800. 600 7438. And just put this board right here in your quiver. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, Because you are an asset to this community. Don't forget the senior citizen hot dog board. Ooh. <laughs> and just, will you tell us about that right now? Yes. 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 What no, is that? That's a mid-range 7-Eleven. It's like, uh, it's an egg shape mm -hmm. with a full nose, 18 and a half nose, 22 and a half, 15 and a half tail, uh, two and three quarters, three inches thick. I got Brenda Rogers riding one. Mm. Brenda Scott. Yeah. And uh, easy entry, turn on a dime, you know, if you want to beat the crowd, that's a uh, one of the last ones that I was writing when I was able to, but I can't make enough of them. Hmm. Yeah. And Brenda Scott, for those who don't know, um, professional surfer from Santa Cruz, Very founder good. of Hotline Wetsuits, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a Kauai legend, yeah. um, and a great surfer. Now, are you sending those boards to Hawaii? No, uh, I just made her one for herself, and then she's got a showroom on Swift Street right mm -hmm. down from Right, the exactly. Mm -hmm. So is Brenda in town right now? Can yeah. I make suggestions, easy. We gotta get Brenda on the show. Right, I know, right. No, it's uh, seriously, <laughs> Brenda is amazing. So we yes. have to get her on the show. Yes. Great to know she's in town, because I thought yeah. she was in Hawaii most of the time. No, she's So what would happen if you yeah. raise your prices up 100 bucks? Because um, you, you, you just said you can't keep enough of them in stock. Are we raising Joey's prices a hundred bucks right now? <laughs> By the way, everybody, it's your By last day. Because <laughs> tomorrow prices are going up a hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he should. Yeah, yeah. He he, he hates to to do that because so so many of his customers are his friends. Right. And re, and they buy repeat boards. And right. He does, but the costs are going up. They are. Carol, I'm behind yeah. you, and I endorse the fact that. If you Joey Sports just went up a hundred bucks tomorrow. So his friend yes. should recognize. They should, I mean, obviously, as his friend, recognize the history that goes into his board. Another hundred bucks. It's not gonna, you know. Come, no, there it's was, not gonna change anything. I can't even recall how many photos I have seen in my life of your surfboards by somebody shredding the <laughs> lane. Well, thank you very yeah. much. Much right? appreciated. Do you know how many? Yeah, there's been a few. There's been a bunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's been a lot. Okay, so 831 600 7438. 7438. And if you call tomorrow to get a new board, it's the last day you can get one at, at today's prices. They're going up 100 bucks. Because they're going up 100 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> done deal. Yeah, so you better order up. Oh, um, oh, and you know, Joey, I'm super stoked because you have Carol. Yes. Yeah. You have no idea. Yeah. yeah. When he called, uh, he called, the called love. Him? The love, love of his life. life. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You, and, and to me. No diamond yet, though. Well, we're working on it. But yeah. to me, uh, congratulations to that. You're Thank a very you. Sweet woman, and, right. uh, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that you're taking care of him, yeah. and uh, and I'm happy that you love her so much. Um, to everybody, let me tell you something. I drove yeah. up today. I drove up today, and he, she's arm and arm, like wrapped. She's wrapped around. Were they making out? Well, hold, by the way, we didn't get the first kiss story. <laughs> hang on. Oh, hang on. we hang gotta on. get that. He's got, okay. he's got one. He's got one hand on a surfboard and yeah. one arm around her. I love that. That's like. <laughs> That's, That's old classic. school right there. That's classic no. photo. Are you romantic, Joey? Are you a oh, romantic he, guy? He is very sweet and very... Uh, he's romantic. 
You could learn a thing or two. You could learn a thing. No, I'm asking for advice. Really, I love this. Opens a door. You know, he does all that. He's got, you know, chivalry. Chivalry. Chivalry is not dead. Wow. No, but he's got a big heart. He's very sweet. Very sweet. Yeah. Love that. Joey Thomas, a romantic. Okay, we learn something new every day. I tell you what. Thanks, Joey. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, good show. Seriously, you're a legend. Yeah, legend. Yeah, and I, 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 and I honestly mean that 100%. You are a legend in this town, um, and if you don't know, you now know. Mm -hmm. And um, and I want to thank you because this is, like we said, this is 50 years of you dedicating your life to surfboard design, manufacturing, and surfing, and uh, building the community a better place. Yeah, and it's the last day of the regular prices because they're going. Because tomorrow they go hundred bucks. <laughs> so it's uh, you have four hours to order that board. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And, and I think we we want to thank all the customers, the people who have gotten his boards. Yeah. yeah. That write them and give him the feedback. Mm hmm Because that's what he's that's what he really lives for. Right. When they get right. the board, he wants to hear like how he, how they ride it. Yeah. How they do with it. And I know that you're not surfing right now, but I love that you drive by every day and like. Or almost wrecked the car with the neck turned around no, backwards like a seagull. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's so yeah. awesome. No, I, I can't take that away from you. And some things never change, Joe uh -huh. Thomas. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being on. Uh, Tyler Fox, again, thanks for having us on Santa Cruz Waves. Everybody you tuned in, I just want to remind you that uh, you just witnessed a show. Uh, Joey Thomas, Santa Cruz legend, uh, uh, surfboard builder. Um, amazing surfer, community leader. Uh, he taught the boys how to be boys. Um, I feel like you're one of the few people that can rope in VC and such a huge part of the history of Santa Cruz surfing. So please. Until next time. Yeah, until next time. We'll have you back. We want to yeah, we 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 keep up this guys. tradition. Yeah. Carol, of course, you'll be back. And we want to talk about yeah, that first kiss. Yeah. Yeah. Give him a big, oh, give him a big yeah. 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 We'll, we'll relive that. We'll relive that first kiss. Oh, um, until next time. Uh, we have Ward Coffee next week. Next Tuesday, Ward Coffee. Ward Coffee will cool. be here next week, you guys. Um, we're continuing our, uh, we're taking it back. We're going full surfboard design. Ward will be here. Thank you again for tuning in. Neil, great show. Thanks, Joey, thank you. thank you. Carol, thank you. Thank you. Thank we'll you. see you next week. Thanks again, everybody. Good night. Thank